2001, Bristol. I was asked to do a talk to the Chartered Institute of Marketing. 140 members turned up. They normally got about 18 or 19. The subject was internet marketing. And as I got up on the screen, I thought to myself, uh, up on the stage, I thought to myself, whoa, these are all my peers. There are fellows of the Chartered Institute of Marketing. There were members, there were chartered members. These were the great and the good of the Chartered Institute of Marketing. I'm getting up there, just a student member, saying, okay, guys, this is how you do it. But the interesting thing is, I didn't know what I was going to ask. And I suddenly, in the top of my head, and the nerves of everything, I said, as customers, when you go around the internet looking for information, looking to purchase something, doing the tasks that you have day to day when you use the internet, I said, what are the aspects of certain websites you go to where you, you're jarred? Where, oh my God, what's going on? And you leave. I said, what do you hate about certain websites? And I asked them to call the answers out. Okay, and the interesting thing was, they were all quite happy to call this out. So I got a flip chart and started writing them down. It went quite well. And later on, about a four or five weeks later, I did another presentation, this was in Cardiff. And I asked the same question. And I did the same thing, wrote it on the flip chart. And this went on and on. And after about, ooh, I think it was about six months, I just, I collected all these sheets of paper I'd written on, and I looked at them. And I noticed something. Everyone was saying the same thing. Everyone was complaining about the same irritations on these websites that they visited. So I thought to myself, hmm, that's interesting. When I do my next presentation, I'll ask the organizers to give me the names of the people, the companies that were attending. So I looked at their website and compared it to the list, and I made a checkpoint on it. I looked at the percentages. I didn't want to name and shame individuals, but I looked at the things that they included. So I started the presentation off, and I said the same thing. What do you hate about websites? And they called the things out, and I wrote them on the, on, on the flip chart, and then I put the next slide up on the screen. And there was the list of the things they just called out. I was a mind reader. <laughs> wow! And I said to them, there isn't someone at the back typing these out as you're calling them. This is research that we've done. A small block of research over six months. And this was really fine for me, and I was, thinking, I was loving it. And I said, let's look at your websites, because I've looked at them all, and compared them to this list, because I knew you were going to call these things out. So then I showed them the results. They were not impressed. The looks on their faces, oh my God. And I thought, this is interesting, because they had answered their own questions. What's wrong with my website? So I said, go home, change these things, because you've just told me you don't like these things. So they're not good enough for you when you use the website, and yet they're good enough for your customers. Okay, so let's look at that list. Oops. Oh, I've asked this question as well all over the world. Okay, all over Europe anyway. Loads of places, wonderful. Glasgow, Budapest, and Luton, and Lisbon. Okay, adverts and pop-ups. How many of you hate those things? Okay. You go to a website, you arrive on it, and they ask you what you think of our website when you just arrived. <laughs> I've never been here before. How am I going to know about this? The adverts. How many of you like looking at all the banner adverts flashing at you and everything else? Come on, stick your hands in the air. All those are really... Where, where are the hands? You don't like it, do you? Because it distracts you from what your task is, what you were trying to do. Okay? So all this goes on is brilliant. Because what you've learned to do is ignore the banners. It's called banner blindness. You as customers, you as people who use the internet and go to these websites, you don't look at the stuff that's flashing in the corner or the big red writing in a box. E and the problem is, is when you go to websites that don't have adverts, they look like adverts. And they could be a very important message, like order today and you get a 100% discount. It's free. Okay, you ignore it, even though it's telling you these things. Okay? Slow to load or use. There are some very nice young people in this audience, and your life's hourglass has got most of the hand sand in the top. Mine's all mostly in the bottom. Okay, and every grain that drops through, every moment that passes, I think to myself, 
my life is l- lapping away. And you get to websites that take seven seconds to download. On average, customers leave a website within two seconds. If it hasn't loaded in two seconds, they've gone. You do it. Because you're not very patient, are you? Nobody is. We've got broadband. We've got super fast broadband. It should happen like that. Does it? No. And that's the problem. Because people now are putting all these wonderful widgets in their websites. Okay? And we look at that in a few seconds. Okay, welcome pages. Rotating, well, they're actually called rotating carousels in the industry, but we know them as rotating images. Do you know the ones, the sites? Okay, let's start with a welcome. Welcome to my website. We created our business in 1996 to provide the highest possible service to the industry. Second paragraph. Over the last 20 years, we've invested in our staff and made them the best trained people to serve you to the best possible ability. Third paragraph. We have IIP, we have ISO 9000, we have IS 1400. You're on the fourth paragraph, you still don't know what they do. (sighs) Okay, so are you going to stick around? Are you going to read those things? How many of you read the introduction to a book? No, you want to get to the first chapter. How does the story start? A few people do, okay? But most people, and it's the same with websites. You arrive at a website, can I do what I want to do here? I'm doing a task. Autoplay video. How many of you work in um, open offices where everybody's in the same room? Okay, so you're there now. You've been asked by the boss to do a bit of research. You go to this website, and suddenly this music starts playing. And what are you doing for the next five seconds? Trying to find the off button on the sound. Bang, 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 bang. No, it won't happen. And all your friends are saying, oh, working, are you? Okay. The person who built that website should never have done that. Gave you the cho- they should give you the choice to be able to switch the sound, uh, not, uh, to, to play the actual video or to play the sound. Okay. And funnily enough, most of these videos I see are these people standing there like rabbits in the headlights. Okay, and there's this talking head, and I've seen some that go on for 25, 30 minutes, and then just talking into the camera. And it's awful, it's so dry and boring, because they're just talking about, we do this, we do that. I don't care what you do, what do I get out of it? That's what you want to know, because your time, your life is the sand grains are dripping through. Okay? Contact details missing, or hard to find. That is a shocking thing. You invested thousands in a website and you haven't told people where you live. You invested a vast amount of money in trying to get people to service your business, okay? And what's happened? You've forgotten to put the telephone number in there. Oh, it is there, but it's really hard to find. And that a large telecoms company, I'm not gonna say which one, because I don't want to advertise, a large telecom t- com- telecoms company has got a five-stage process to go through on their website before you can find the telephone numbers. Once you get to the telephone numbers, they're trying to push you all the time to go to the frequently asked questions. How many people have found a frequently asked question which is exactly the one they want to ask? <laughs> I sent a question off to Microsoft in, ni- in 2006. I'm still waiting for an answer. I've got a number, okay? I'm leaving it because it makes a really good story because they frequently ask questions, couldn't answer my question. I finally found a form, filled it in, asked the question. Actually, the technology has moved on now. I'm on Windows 10. So that was to do with Windows XP. So it's long gone, okay? When you get to the contact us page, it's a lovely form to fill in. Or you've got to phone the company. Now take, for instance, the tourism industry self-catering holidays. What should be on that website? Okay, this is how the customer goes. And ladies, you are the ones who do most of the ordering for holidays, for your partner, for your husband, for the family. Okay, the husband may hand over his credit card, but you are the the ones who are organizing because the guys are too busy watching football, sports, or whatever else. And you think, let's have a weekend away. So you go to a website, you you know where you want to go, Pembrokeshire, let's say, self-catering weekend. Okay, you go on the site, what's the first thing you want to do? I'll tell you, what's what we found from our research. You want to find out, is it available? Because I'm not going to waste time, my valuable time, looking at a website, no matter how wonderful the house looks, no matter how wonderful the location, unless it's available this weekend, or next weekend, or the two weeks that you're booking in for your annual leave. 
Okay? Second thing you want to know. Okay? You want photographs of the property. If it's available, now we want to know the price. We also want to know, is it available? Okay? When you, uh, it, it's available. Once we know it's available, we, we then want to know what it looks like inside. And you, some of the websites I go to in the tourism industry where you've got self-catering houses, the one photograph that's missing is of the bathroom. And it's really important. Most women we asked in this co in, in the conversation is one of the most important photographs they want to see. Is the, is, is, the, is the bathroom nice? Is the bedroom nice with big fluffy pillows on, this, on, the, on the bed and things? Okay, and, and what's happening is the business owner is not aware that their customers are looking for this information because they've never thought about what it is the customer wants. What is the customer's task? Information overload. Have you come across those sites? We go to a site and there's this block of text. It really makes you want to go and read it. Okay, because you've got to plow through. You know there's a bit of information that you're looking for, but it's probably on the 15th line down and it's the last three words. But you've got to read all these other 15 lines first to find it. Have you got time? No. Patience? Gone. Find somewhere else where it's easy to find. Okay? And they don't ask, answer the basic questions. Prices. That's a big important one, isn't it? The number of websites you go to where there's no price. You have to fill a form in. And that's this one. Okay, register for the forms to get the prices. Express quote. No, just give me an indication of what it's likely to cost. Okay? And the funny thing about businesses here is that they know their own prices. They've done the round robin, phoning competitors to find out what they charge because a friend's done it for them and they know what their competitors are charging. So they know the prices, their competitors know their prices because they've done it to them. But the people who need to know, the customers, haven't got a clue. And I asked a couple of, I've asked loads of businesses this, why don't you put your prices on? Ah, well our competitors might find out and undercut us. But they don't put the prices up. So think about it. If they haven't got the prices up and you haven't got the prices up, what's the customer going to do when they come up? They aren't going to say you're undercutting the other ones because they don't put the prices up anyway. Okay? A prices are really important. Okay? Don't know where to begin. That's one of the biggest problems with websites, a failure to start. You get there, you're looking for information, but there's a failure to show you where the starting point is. Now, do you invest time chasing around the website to find out where to start, or do you leave? And the answer is to leave. Okay? 50% of people who go on websites fail to find the start point, and they leave. Okay? So there's a lot of people leaving before they've even started. It's the bounce rate, if you understand what that is. Okay? So what? Why is it important? Okay? There's no point in getting people to your website if they can't use it when they get there. So you invested money in the website, you put it up, it doesn't work properly, you spend a fortune on advertising, getting people there, and they all leave. This is a huge problem with so many websites. Uh, task orientated, you are. Are you not? All are task orientated. We don't go on the internet and say, oh, I got three hours, I'll kill it on the internet. No, you have a task to do. And the thing is, if especially in work, you go on online, you have tasks to do, or you, you have tasks to do for the day, and what's your favorite thing? It's to finish the tasks as fast as possible, get the jobs done, okay? So if it's information you want, you want the information straight away. If it's to do some purchasing, you want to do the purchasing quickly, easily, fewest possible steps, okay? You are impatient, as I said, okay? You have a high expectation that the information has gone out there. Is the information out in the internet? Just stick your hands in the ass if it's yes. Or say yes, go on, shout yes. yes. Yes, exactly. You know that the information, and you make assumptions. And often you click on buttons before you've even thought about it. And that's where people go around in circles. Okay? You, okay, the customers want to know where is the next step in my journey. Because you're all selfish in a way. You just say, oh, it doesn't matter, the designer's made a pretty website. We just tr trawl around a bit more. Okay. How can I complete my task? Okay. How do I move on? And there's a number of things that stop you doing it. The barriers. Okay. The pop-ups. Uh, the, the, the fill the forms in. All these other things. The slow loading. All these things. The no prices. You just leave. 
Okay, and this is one of the things that so many businesses have a problem with. There was a rather large company who had, uh, and I'll give an example, who had an issue because before you could buy anything on the website, you had to register an account. Okay, have you come across those websites? I'd like to hear a voice one. Yeah, yeah. yeah you all say yes. So you have to register an account. You have to give them loads of information before you can buy a p purchase an item. Okay, well, what happened was that they did some user experience testing. They asked their customers. And one of the comments that came up was, I don't want to form a relationship, I just want to buy, they actually said a book. But anyway, I want to sort of buy something, okay? So they changed the register button because what they noticed was the same information was required to make the purchase as to register, except for two bits of information, okay? So they changed the register and the two bits of information they needed, they asked for after the purchase had been made. Okay, to continue. People clicked on the continue because they were on the journey. Oh, this is where I'm going now. They made their purchase, filled all the information in, and once they made the purchase, they then asked people in a pop-up, okay, thank you for the purchase. Would you like to register um, a, a single access account? So next time you don't have to fill in, fill in all the details. It's quite interesting because the outcome was 45% increase in customers making a purchase. Now, how many of you in business would like to see a 45% increase in customers making a purchase? That would be wonderful. We're, not, we're just changing the word on the button. Okay? Resulted in an increase in, wait for it, wait for it, sales in the first month of $15 million. Okay? And sales in the first year of $300 million. It's actually known as the $300 million button, and you can look that up online. You probably know who I'm talking about, but it made a huge difference to their turnover, to their profitability, because they'd understood what the customer wanted, a short, easy-to-buy process, and then afterwards, yeah, that's a good idea, I'll register an account, okay? The internet is a self-service environment. It's an environment where you are in control as customers. So it should be written for you, not for the businesses, okay? Uh, it is user-led and, surprise, surprise, you're all unpredictable. We all are, okay? You can, how, how, if you've got businesses, if you've got a website, and I'm not talking now about sales websites, I'm talking all types of websites, including university websites, uh, newspaper websites, television websites, and everyone else. User experience, user testing, observe what your customers do, okay? Why is it important to your business? And this is the crux. 2.19 billion pounds were spent on the internet last week in the United Kingdom. Okay? And in mobile sales, because we mentioned those as they're really important, there's a 117% increase in the number of, people speak, uh, number of people buying using their mobile phones. Walk in the shoes of your customers. Understand how they use the internet. Understand what their tasks are, and build a website for the customer. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you.